The next morning, we regrouped downstairs at the inn as planned. Alright. Is everyone now prepared to begin our journey? Wow, Amelia, you're up early. Okay. Be not. Then let us depart. Right, let us depart. She leads the way out of the inn and back into the quiet city. Remnants of last night's festival litter the ground in a series of petals and general debris. What do you mean by general debris though? Uh, if you mean rubbish, okay, I understand, but general debris, that's a really weird term to say. I think you mean like rubbish, but then it doesn't make sense to call it rubbish. But general debris, what, <laughs> what does that even mean? The cleanup detail is hard at work. They wear thick gloves as they half-heartedly remove the decorations and debris. I think you meant... I think you meant... Rubbish? Not debris. Because debris is like the ruins of a building, like those collapse. Like those buildings, then you have those debris. Hey, don't call this debris. I wonder how long they have been working on this. The festivities continued even after I threw in my hat and went to bed. Diana and I share a glance and she smiles. We follow Amelia through the twists and turns of the city. So we're going to Amberbys, right? The hidden city of Amberbys. Where exactly are we going now? To the Crystal Rail Station. Okay, so we're going to the Crystal Rail Station first. Crystal Rail? Sounds like it might be a train. Diana speaks up before I even ask. Where are we taking the Crystal Rail to? Amberbys. <laughs> no, I don't think there's a direct train there, but yeah. Bazada. Okay, Bazada. She looks up in surprise. Ember mist is in Bazada? Or maybe close to it. They say you can find anything there. Really? <laughs> she shoots Zack a look which he returns with his usual stony gaze. What's so surprising about Bazada? Well it sounds like bazaar, so It's just closer than I expected. Oh, is it that close? No. Ember Mist is not within Bazada, but Bazada is the closest station to the location of Ember Mist. Yeah, pretty much. Yana still seems skeptical but doesn't push it. Guess we'll find out whether or not Amelia is right. I don't think Amelia lies anyway. We can trust her. We continue the rest of the way in silence. After a few minutes, we arrive at the station. The setup is a simpler version of our train stations back home. The ticket booth is right across from the entrance. It's the simplest version of a regular train station on in our real world. Okay. Well, they sort of retrieving tickets and look around. Vendors selling food and trinkets line perimeter of the enclosed space. The building is mostly empty at this time of morning. We must hurry if we wish to catch the next crystal rail. It is nearing the platform. Yeah, because this this trains and all. I mean, the whole place is powered by crystal energy, guys. Yeah? So that's why it's called the crystal rail. The train. Once we get our tickets, we rush down a back hallway, which opens up to the platform. Oh, nice looking platform right here. This train platform actually looks pretty cool. I mean, it looks like a, a UK, you know, a, a train station in UK. Yeah, this kind of design. Yeah, it actually also looks like a Harry Potter train station. <laughs> yeah, kind of, kind of gives the same vibes. Yeah, except that the train that runs here is using crystal energy. Yeah, it does give that vibe, doesn't it? Yeah, like a, yeah, the British train, train station. Arriving onto the platform is a slick bullet train, porcelain white with windows dotting the sides. My jaw drops as I watch it hover over the tracks. Yeah, like magic. Well, it is magic. A pair of long crystal rolls run along the bottom of the train with identical crystal rolls lining the track. Well, this is so cool. It's not that big a deal. I mean, it's really cool. Come on. I feel almost giddy as we line up the board. I can't believe I'm about to ride on a hover train. Yana cocks her head to the side. Is this not something you're used to? Yeah, it's not because our train is has wheels. Yes, I'm, I'm pretty sure this crystal rail doesn't have wheels. So um, our trains have wheels, yes, and they run on the tracks. Not exactly. We have trains too, but they mostly want, uh, run on diesel and electricity now. Yeah, the more advanced one is electricity. The original models were powered by steam. Yeah, and those are the ones with wheels. Actually, the ones run by electricity now, they still do have wheels, but it's just not as obvious as the as the one as the trains that are run by steam. Yeah. Yeah, that's eyes widened. That must be some powerful magic. No, yours is the powerful magic. <laughs> the crystal energy is the powerful magic. That's not magic. That's just boiling water. This is magic. Yeah, that smiles. 
Yeah, you, you, you want your mother too, right, Pango? You're mesmerized. Pango eyes the crystals on the train, his mouth opened in anticipation. Oh, right, he, he, he wants the energy, <laughs> the magic energy. Nana notices and snatches him up. Sorry, Pango, you cannot eat the energy or else the, the crystal rail cannot run. He wriggles at first, but after she gives him a few pats on the head, he comes down and grins at her. We are about to board the train when the attendant stops us. Is it because of the Pango? Is he gonna say, nope, no Pango's allowed? Sorry, Pangos are not allowed due to equipment which are sensitive to energy absorption. God damn it. Well, I guess Pango, you have to. I guess you have to accompany us somehow, somehow make your. somehow follow us. I don't know how. Oh. But does that mean we have to abandon Pango? No! Yena looks sadly at the blue guy in her arms. I'm sorry, my friend, but I think this is where we say goodbye. No, no goodbyes, no adieu, no farewell, no sayonara. He blinks back at her in confusion, a worried smile on his face. Hi? Yes, Fungo, we have to part ways. Yena sleep trembles. I'm sorry. She gives him a final hug and sets him down on the ground. Then with glassy eyes full of tears, she rushes into the train. The Pango blinks. Poi, poi. I'm sorry, Pango. I know you're very confused, but... Amelia cocks her head to the side and looks at it. The Pango mimics her. Poi. I have not known you long, but I will be saddened to see you go. Yeah, I think you will definitely be saddened, Amelia. She nods and then hops onto the train. Actually, we all will, right? We all will be saddened. Zack looks at the pango and instinctively, his hand protects the gun. His guns. <laughs> Seriously, Zack, all you care about is your guns. Try not to eat anyone else's weapon. Poi, poi. <laughs> now you're making the pango even more confused. What? What? <laughs> pango blinks at Zack's retreating form. Actually, yeah, but I think he's more confused than everyone leaving pango behind. Finally, it's my turn. I'll miss you. I guess this, this is goodbye. Well, I mean, we should say I'll miss you because... I mean, it has, hasn't been long. We have not been with the Pango for long, but I think we'll miss it, yes. Yeah. It blinks and greens. Boy, boy. What? And you're not sad? I didn't expect this to be so difficult. He cocks his, his head to the side and tries again. Boy, boy. I'm sorry, Pango. I'm sorry, little buddy, but this is as far as you can go together. Don't follow me, okay? I mean, because it's not allowed. You're not allowed to come with me. Hi? Or rather with us. He tries to hop up onto my shoulder as he's done so many times in the past, but I don't let him. I'm sorry, but you have to stay here. Hi? Yes, Pango, do you understand me? You have to stay here. I quickly turn away and head onto the tree. While other people bought the train, I joined the rest of my group. Diana tries to control her sniffers while Amelia looks down at her feet. Now actually, I'll have to be a bit honest, this is... This may kind of seem a bit, like, overdramatic. Yeah, to some people, and I can understand why, because it's like... Like you're crying out there, but... Mm, but at the same time, I guess I can also understand, even though we have not been... We have not spent time with Pango for long, uh... You know, it's, it's it's still sad to see a friend go, you know. Zack acts as casual as always, but the not he gives me feels like last I don't think Zack actually cares. <laughs> We're all feeling the loss of the Pango, no. I, actually, I think Zack doesn't really care either way. He was my first friend when I came to this world. Yeah, Zack. Now this sounds kind of corny, but anyway. <laughs> After we've had a moment to compose ourselves, we search for our train cabin. We pass through a few cars before we finally find our cabin towards the end of the train. Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> wow, look at the amused reaction. <laughs> oh! What? 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 <laughs> so far. <laughs> she just looks so stunned. Amelia slides open the door then shuts it immediately. What? 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 Impossible. What? What's impossible? What's going on? She opens the door again and we all peer inside. Inside the cozy cabin are plush seats, a rack above, above the seats to hold any luggage and a rectangular table in the center, uh huh. There is also Pango bouncing happily on the seats. Ha <laughs> See, that's why I say it's a bit too overdramatic. We all got emotional over nothing. 
Because I told you, Tango will be back. Yeah, you will find some way to follow us, and here we are. Here he is. Still with us. Good job, Tango. But you managed to sneak in. <laughs> past the past the attendant. Good job, Pango. Pongo. Yeah! <laughs> Pongo! Vienna squeals excitedly and scoops him up, scoops him back up into a big hug. We all file into the cabin after her and shut the door before anyone notices the Pongo. Yeah. While Liana notices our stairs, she clears her throat and sets him back down. But how did you get in here? Yeah, good question. I mean, doesn't matter as long as he managed to sneak in, maybe through the windows, you know? Seriously, weren't you just outside a second ago? Or did you get in here and find our cabin before we did? Probably just follow us, I mean like like maybe like outside follow us outside and then once it saw it sees us it saw us uh come into this cabin, yeah it's right here. Oh, or maybe it's just a secret. Impossible. Impossible, oh my god, look at me, it looks so stunned. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, she's not believing it. I think the pango broke Amelia, yeah, yeah, really, she looks so stunned. Amelia looks so stunned. Zack, as unfazed as always, flops down into one of the seats and leans back. Some things just can't be explained. Definitely, some things just can't be explained. With how often the pango seems to disappear and reappear unexpectedly, you think we'll be used to it by now. But this is rather sudden. I take the seat as well as the pango. Or rather, I take a seat as well, and the pango hops into my lap. Yena pouts as the pango moves away from her. <laughs> Amelia seems to have recomposed herself and also takes a seat. Not much later, I feel the jerk of the train departing and hear the coming hum of the engine. Both Yena and Amelia stare out of the window. Zack has his head down and his arms crossed. I think he may be asleep, but it's hard to tell. Remembering how I found him at the campsite, I can only assume this guy can literally sleep everywhere. Well, he's a he's a lone so-called lone wolf, right? So yeah, my eyes feel droopy too. Yeah, time to sleep for a while. I mean, it's going to be a long ride to Bazada. I really went all out last night and did not get enough sleep. I doubt anyone will mind if I just caught up on a few of those hours I lost when I woke up. When I wake up, everyone else is awake too and looking more bored than ever. Only the pango snoozes in my lap. Actually, we do have a deck of cards with us, right? So we can, you know, play a game of cards. Yeah. Oh, nice sky. Look at this sky. The evening sky. The evening sky really looks beautiful in, in this way. It's like every evening you see this kind of sky. Because this is the sort of sky that you don't usually see every day. At least not in my country. Right? Yeah, you don't see this kind of orange sunset all the time, you know. So this is really beautiful to be able to see this kind of orange sunset every day, you know, every evening. It's really fantastic. It's really awesome, you know. Diana glances at me. Just a few hours. Oh, a few hours. Thank goodness. Are we almost there? No, we will not arrive before tomorrow. Oh, okay, so we'll be sleeping overnight in the train then. Tomorrow? Yes. Okay. Yes. What am I going to do with all this spare time? I automatically react, uh, reach into my pocket to pull out my phone, forgetting for a second that it doesn't work. Shoot. Well, I mean, I mean, we can sleep overnight. So, but then, what, what, what are we going to do throughout this evening? Of course, after dinner, what are we going to do? But then my hand closes in on something equally good. I pull out my deck of cards and lay them out on the table. Yana cranes her neck to see better. What do you have there? A deck of playing cards. Have you not played cards before? My cards, you know, like 1 to 10 and then Jack, Queen, King and Ace. I cut the deck and shuffle them. Want to play something? There's enough people that we can play cheat. We can play this game of cheat. How do you play that? It's easy. Each round you will put a card from your hand face down on the center of the table and say what card it is. Like this. I put one down as an example. One king. And then everyone else at the table can decide whether or not I'm telling the truth. If you think I'm lying, you call a cheater and I'll have to reveal the card. Okay? If I was lying, then I take all the cards in the pile. 
If I was telling the truth, then whoever accused me takes all the cards in the power and the next person starts a new round. So it goes on until one player is out of cards, then that player is the winner. Right? Yeah. You win by having no cards in your hand. Sounds like fun. I'll play. Alright. Amelia, Amelia looks thoughtful. Although I have not partaken in this game before. This sounds like it would be a stimulating challenge. Yes, you stimulate your brain, yes. <laughs> of course. I glance at Zack. What about you, Zack? Come on, don't be a spoil spot. You in? We need a we need four players to play this. He shakes his head. Come on now. I'll pass. Don't pass? <laughs> You're not supposed to pass? Yeah, enough founds. Why not? I know that mercenaries love card games. And it's not like there's much else to do while we wait. But I mean he can always sleep, but yeah, don't be a spoil spot. <laughs> it's just not my type of game. What do you mean it's not your type of game? So you prefer to play Blackjack or poker? I'm actually fine with that, but I think these girls don't know how to play those kind of games. I guess no game then. Let's up the stakes here. No, 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 no. We're not going to say no game then. We're not going to spoil. Be a spoil spot ourselves? Yeah, we're going to up the stakes here. Come on. If you win, then something. I don't know what stakes we're going to play here though. As a mercenary, I think I know what can spark his interest. Alright, so what is it? What if we play for money? Zack sits up and looks at me. I thought you didn't have money. Well, I don't have money, but I have a phone that I can, you know, sell for a lot of money. <laughs> I do have money. Well, fake money. Well, in this world anyway. <laughs> from my wallet. I fish in my pockets and drop the loose change I have on the table. It's just not usable here. Amelia leans in close and peers at the money. Even Liana takes an interested glance. I fail to recognize this type of currency. Yeah, because it's not from this world, it's not from this planet. <laughs> ah well, I'm not exactly from sorry, oh, yeah, I think Amelia doesn't know yet, right, that I'm not from this world, from this planet. Amelia stares intently at me again. After a long pause, she looks back at the coins. Oh yeah, no, she knows, right? I'm, I'm sure she knows. Because she said she was studying about the thing. So I'm sure she knows that I'm not from this world. I see. Yeah. I point out the different types of change I have. Make sure you get the pennies. They're the most valuable. Are these not made from copper? Ah, uh, yes, they are made from copper. Or, or you're saying, are these not made? Yeah, they're not made from copper. And the nickel would be made from nickel. Um, no, okay, no. I think what I mean is saying, are these not made? Are these made from copper? Yes, these are made from copper. And then nickel are made from ni nickel, yes. Also, yes. Yeah, I think this one be a phrase, uh, wrong phrasing. Then suffice it is to say, should not the nickel be more valuable than the penny? <laughs> oh, you're a smart girl. Ah, you got me. <laughs> Damn, she got me, yeah. <laughs> Then Le Zach leans back into his seat. If it's not money I can use, then I'm not interested. Why? You can always sell it. I mean, people won't know what this this money is. You know, you can sell for big money in your world, in this world. Zach, I will pay you for his coins. Oh, you will pay him for his coins? Zach sits back up. Go on. Nice. I mean, you're a great negotiate ne negotiator. You receive. I will trade you one of our coins. Cool, nice. Amelia, you really don't have to do that. I think you mean you mean trade you one of your coins, not our coins. Why would you trade out one of our coins? I think it's one of your coins, right? I know. You know what do you mean? You know. <laughs> so you, but you're still willing to do it. Diana looks uneasily between Zach and Amelia. All right, deal. Why? Zack's on! As Zack after scene, I deal, deal out the cards. Zack bounces when he looks at his hand. These cards are strange. Strange? How is it strange? It's just diamonds, spades, hearts, and clubs. <laughs> How is it strange? And then you have the King, Queen, and and Jack, and then the the Ace. Like I say, I'm not from Asaria. So what cards do you people play? I give a brief rundown of the sweets and face cards. When I look up from my hand, I see Amelia staring at me. This is getting a little uncomfortable. Let's start the pack. 
we all throw our coins on the table. So it's using our big money. I'll go first. I drop a card face down on the table. One tap. Silence. No one reacts. Okay, Diana, it's your go. Because it's that if they think I'm lying, they will call, right? Yeah. So they they all believe that I'm telling the truth, so yeah. Okay. Okay, right? She slides her card onto the table, her face completely blank. One, two. Okay, completely blank. Hmm. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll just pass. I bet she's telling the truth. I mean, when it comes to Diana, I think she will start off with telling the truth. So I, I, I'm not, I'm not gonna take my chances just yet. So nobody else calls her out either. I mean, let's go. Her face even more stark than Liana's. Amelia places a card onto the table. One queen. I think Amelia is also telling the truth, so they will all start off with telling the truth. Let me try you can trust me on that. So I'm gonna pass as well. I don't think she's cheating. Again, okay, neither does anyone else. Maybe they aren't quite understanding how to play. <laughs> Although I guess it is just the first round. Finally Zack's go. In usual Zack fashion. Histori uh, historically slips a cut down. I'm gonna call cheat. This is definitely cheat. Cheater. Hey! I wanna call cheat! Then you call cheat! I mean, God damn it! Hey, why is there no choice for me to call cheat first? Whoa, she was fast! Without breaking from his poker face, he flips open the card to reveal different cards than it. Silently, he collects the pulse. Why can't we get the choice to call for cheat for Zack, god damn it. Ah. We count how many cards each person has in their hands and whoever has the lowest number so far collects the first round of packs. And we throw in our next round of our bets. Okay, me again. Uh alright, that's uh that's what should I do? I don't think I want to cheat right here because if I cheat then a video will call me out. I'm gonna stay with the truth. Better stick with truth. Okay, so um, let's see. Yeah, we're just going to poker face. Yeah, keeping my face as still and blank as possible. I slip two cards onto the table. Two trees. Nobody calls him out. God damn it! <laughs> Someone should call me out. I should show a tell. So far, so good. I'm playing really safe here, though. <laughs> Diana looks slightly worried at her hand and then smooths her face. Um, hmm. I'm gonna pass. I bet she was faking her worry and is telling the truth. Better not risk it. Cheater. Oh, Zack. <laughs> Diana Green says she flips over two aces. Zack wordlessly collects the card. See, I told you, Zack, you cannot, you cannot call cheat. She's laughing. Good thing I stayed silent. Yeah, <laughs> I'm still playing safe. Amelia puts down her cards. Two sevens. Two sevens. <sighs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take a risk here. I know Amelia is a very smart girl, very intelligent girl, but I'm gonna call cheat. Cheater! <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Amelia flips over two sevens. I sigh as I collect the power. Without delay, Zack lays down his cards. Two fives. Before anyone else has a chance to react, Amelia calls out again. Cheater. What? Zack grumbles under his breath as he collects the power. Why you keep playing cheat? <laughs> Come on, I mean why you keep lying, Zack? Come on, play stick you with the truth. Why did you bother bluffing when you were the one starting a new pile? Hmm, good question. <laughs> That's the best time to bluff. Nobody expects you to. But then Amelia really caught you out, you know. Well, Amelia expected it. Yeah, so you need to change your strategy. Zack looked sideways at Amelia. Because she's some kind of mind reading witch. No, I think it's very obvious. It's not mind reading here. Amelia looks smart at Zack's disgruntledness. Oh, she looks so smart, really. <laughs> Alright, last round. The bet for this round goes to the winner and we start a new pot. I think Amelia is leading. Back to me again. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna take a risk now. I'm gonna cheat. Time to trick everyone! Uh, yeah, I'm gonna poke her face. I drain all emotion from my face and place a card under the table. One king. Cheater. <laughs> what? 
Amelia! Oh, I thought I had everyone food! Amelia's pretty good at this. I flip over my card to reveal two of hearts. Diana lays down her heart. Uh, uh, Diana lays down her card looking confident. One king? Alright, I'm just going to. Yeah, if I lose, it's fine. I mean, earlier I was just playing safe, now I just go all out. <laughs> Cheater! Nope. What? She flips over the card to reveal a king. Shoot. <laughs> I should have seen that coming. I collect the card. At least it's one card only. Amelia wears the same stony face and slips down a card. One jack. One jack. Cheat! <laughs> Cheater! Amelia. Yes! Yes! Amelia wordlessly flips over the card to reveal a ten of clubs. She slips it back into her hand. Finally, I got it right. See? That's this the right moment to call Amelia cheat. Yes! Zack plays his card. One, six. Okay. Again, Amelia is faster than anyone else. Cheater. Why you keep... Why you keep lying, <laughs> Zack? <laughs> you should... Come on. Zack growls in frustration. How do you know every single time? Because you keep cheating. You're a cheater! Have you like play fair for once, Zack? <laughs> Amelia just stares at him with her same blank stare, which frustrates Zack even more. This is the dumbest game ever. <laughs> just because you're losing the end. <laughs> Don't be a sore loser, Zack. Come on now. <laughs> you're being a sore loser here. Hey! Calm down! Hey, <laughs> calm the freaking down! He throws his cards down on the table and knocks over the coins before crossing his arms. Yana jumps away from, from the table as Zack hits it, her eyes wide. I'm a little taken back and jot back which makes the Pango. Only Amelia remains unfazed. Poi, poi? Uh, sorry Pango, yeah, uh, Zack's very angry right now, can you like calm him down? <laughs> so uh, should we keep playing? Of course. Oh, you, you want to keep playing? Alright, I thought you said you're quitting, you're rage quitting or something. Okay. Zack picks his cards back up. Diana and I glance at each other and burst out laughing. At first, Amelia looks at us in bewilderment, but our laughter is so contagious that she picks a smile. Oh, we see a smile for the first time, right? Yeah. Are we playing or what? Alright, right. Calm down, man. We resume the game with smiles all around. At least I made it, managed to call cheat once. <laughs> that and that's Amelia. Yeah. So that's one out. Of how many? No. Uh, how many? Um. I mean, uh, of course, the beginning, the troops also got it correct. But I think I managed to call out one cheat, which is great. Yeah, on Amelia. The final round. Yeah, final round before we con before that incident happened. The longer we played, the more into the game everyone became. Needless to say, Amelia quietly guessed Zack cheats every single time, much to Zack's ever-growing frustration. In the end, I won the game with the first to run out of cards. Yes, I won the game. Nice. Yeah, I think it's. I think you know that cheat that I caught out on Amelia was the turning point. Yeah, that was the turning point. All right. Yeah, I won the game. And we were tired of cheat. I taught them a couple of other games like blackjack, poker. It was late into the night when we all decided to turn in and go to sleep. We didn't eat, right? Dinner. Alright. The sun shines brightly through the window and splashes onto my face, forcing me awake. Or rather, on my face. Diana and Amelia are both already awake, but Zack still has his head down as if he's still asleep. What oh, a nice, nice looking sky right there. I look out and scream at the sky. What time is it? It's already past noon. We slept through the entire morning. Oh nice. But that means we're almost going to reach Vazada, right? We did? Diana giggles at my alarm. Normally that would be a bad thing, but in this case it's okay. We're almost at Bazada. Nice, yeah. We woke up just in time. Why not? Zack gradually wakes up and we all make sure we have all, our, all of our things. After another hour or two, the train stops and announces our arrival to Bazada. The sun hangs high in the sky as one by one we step off the train. 
As soon as I set foot in the city, I'm assaulted by the sound of voices. Oh. Makeshift stores line the sides of roads and alleys as people pack the streets. Yeah, this is definitely... Yeah, definitely... Why... You can definitely see why it's called Bazaar, because it is a bazaar. <laughs> right? Yeah, bazaar full of goods that you can buy and such. Traders entice onlookers to view their wares and customers haggle in heated shouting matches. Are we going to have to travel through that? I blanch at the thought of getting trapped amidst the sea of people, like sardines in a can. I've never seen this word blanch, but okay, blanch. We have arrived in Basada. Alright. This is where we'll find Amber Miss. Have you been paying attention, please, Sir Fish? She said, this is not where we'll find Amber Miss. This is where we'll get info on where we can find Amber Miss. Amber Miss is near here, not here, you know? No, as I said, it is the closest city to Ember Mist. Yeah, Pixel Sophie, have you been paying attention? Considering the part, the bustle of this place, I find it a little hard to believe that the hidden city is so close. No wonder Liana seemed so surprised. Yeah, I mean like this is so busy then Ember Mist is actually nearby, near here. But then again, if you look at the background, you see like mountains with like smoke there. So maybe that's the area where Ember Mist is located. Yeah, maybe. Amelia seems to read my thoughts. Of course, close is a relative term. We must first traverse some rough terrain and pass through the forest before we find Ember Mist. Okay. She points towards the, the south, where I can make out the tips of tree tops, and then and then she glances up at the sky. Considering only a few hours remain before nightfall, it may be in our best interest to spend the evening here in the city and depart in the morning. All right, we'll do just that. But in the meantime, we can like explore Bazada, right? Vienna nods. Good thinking. This marketplace is so huge. People say you can literally buy your heart's desires here. Well, that depends on whether the the, the goods here are what you want. Like for me, I'm more I'm mostly into buying computer stuff and all. Yeah, computer. So if you ask me, this place, yeah, I won't be able to buy my heart's desires here. Because I won't be, buy, be able to buy vision novels, I won't be able to buy games, I won't be able to buy computer stuff here. <laughs> you know? Because this place just doesn't sell those stuff. <laughs> so, yeah, I won't be able to buy my heart's desires here, okay? Sorry, Diana. <laughs> Is there something you're thinking of buying? Nothing in particular, but I would like to check out the stalls. Traders from all over the world gather here to sell their wares. Okay. If only they sell computer wares. <laughs> or maybe gameware, I don't know. <laughs> Hardware, software. Okay, anyway. I glance down at my feet and watch the Pango Wigger excitedly. Ikas Angri looks into the crowd. Is there a lot of magic here? I haven't seen this guy so excited since he first tried to eat me. Amelia bends down and scrutinizes him. She pokes him with her finger and the Pango Giggers. Everything is right? I'm going to the inn. I'll meet up with you later. Alright, see ya, Zack. If any of us can react, Zack slips into the crowd. Should we go after him? Amelia doesn't even blink at Zack's departure. She's too preoccupied with the pango. Oh, well, she's starting to take interest, take an interest in the pango? Diana shakes her head. No, but since Zack left, I'm going to go too. Should we meet back up at the inn? Well, can I accompany you though? Or maybe I can join you later. Sure. She nods and heads into the crowd. Since everyone else seems to know what they want to do, what do I want to do? So I guess we can either go shopping with Diana, see what Amelia is up to, check on Zack or be a loner. I think we can go through all these three options if I remember correctly. Yeah, this is another one of those choices where you can go through all three choices before going on your own, you know. So now I don't want to be a loner. First, I want to first let's go shopping with Diana. Yeah. I head in the same direction I think Diana's gone and duck into the crowd, trying not to bump into too many people as I explore the marketplace. I've never seen the place this crowded before. It doesn't feel like I'm walking so much as being pushed by everyone. Despite all the people, I'm fascinated by the market stores. Merchants sell all different types of merchandise ranging from clay pottery to magic amulets. As I'm being pushed through the crowd, I see a glimpse of blonde hair and white armor. That must be Diana! I wait through the crowd and see Liana frozen in place, huh? Hey Liana, why are you frozen in place? 
She blinks at me. Hey! Hey, what are you looking at? How's the marketplace so far? Really interesting. There's a lot of cool stuff I haven't seen before. Really? She seems distracted. Do you smell that? Smell what? I breathe in deeply. Smells fruity and sweet, smells silent but deadly. Smell what? Uh, well, I just said smell what, but I don't want to be rude to her, so um, silent but deadly. What do you mean by this? <laughs> what, what is silent but deadly? In, let's go with this one. Fruity and sweet. An overwhelmingly sweet smell wafts by on the breeze. Uh, I mean, if we go with silent but deadly, that sounds really weird, you know. So I would, and it sounds quite ominous, so I wouldn't want to choose that. There's really no way I couldn't. I think it's coming from that stall over there. Come on. Okay. She darts back into the crowd, and I quickly follow until we stop at a stall filled with delicate glass bottles. Huh? Is this perfume? Yes. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, okay. Hi, merchant. A tanned man in silken robes ushers us closer to the store. He selects a glass bottle filled with a pale pink liquid and offers it to Liana. I think it's safe, right? It should be safe. A noble scent to match such a noble woman. Oh my god, you charmer. Yeah, you totally want... Yeah, it's all part of business, right? Say such a smooth line to get a girl to buy the perfume. Liana blushes and delicately sniffs the, bat, uh, the bottle. Her eyes widen in recognition. It sniffs the inside of the bottle. Is that extract of spirit orchid? Spirit orchid? The man greens broadly and clasps his hands together. Yes, yes. Very rare. From the far celestial mountain. You don't sound very enthusiastic though, merchant. <laughs> In the way he speaks is really weird. But anyway, from the far celestial mountains? I never expected to find this perfume here. What is it? Vienna offers me the bottle and I take a tentative whiff. It smells fruity, like a cross between an apple and a pear. This is a flower? She nods. The spirit orchid. It only grows in the deep forest of the celestial mountain range. I see. Why is it called the spirit orchid? Well, maybe I can get the spirit, because it's like um, celestial mountain. So when you talk about celestial, it's related to spirit. Something like that. When it grows, it almost looks like it's floating mid oh. like a spirit. Interesting. <laughs> That's why it's called Spirit spirit Orchid. That's kind of neat. She nods absentmindedly and continues to hold the bottle. You want to get it? Yana quickly shakes her head. Oh, sorry. It just reminds me of home. Reminds you of home? Or... Oh. Maybe... Maybe she has some... Something sad happen back home maybe or maybe it's just nostalgic because it's like long time never been home so when she smells this you know is your home somewhere near the celestial mountain range though or maybe not somewhere near there maybe it's like she used to smell this because maybe her dad or her parents or what bought that spray orchid perfume for her before maybe my grandmother used to wear oh. perfume whenever she left the house when i was little that meant taking me down to the market but it's your grandmother okay it reminds you, so the perfume reminds you of your grandmother. She smiles fondly at the memory, but her heart, her eyes hold a hint of sadness. I loved wandering the shops and stalls. It didn't matter if I had nothing to buy. It was a chance to leave the house and be like everyone else. So basically, window shopping. It sounds like you didn't get to go out much. It was complicated. Complicated. I guess Le Leanna doesn't want to share her past with me just yet. I mean, we haven't known each other for too long, so we need to build up this report so that she eventually share her past with me. She doesn't offer up any more information and returns the bottle to a blank spot on the shelf. Although she's been very helpful in helping me understand this world, Diana doesn't talk about her past much. Yeah, now I want to know more about you, Diana. I glance at her again. She looks pensively at the bottle, a small crease in her brow. Suddenly, a new scent cuts through. Cuts through the floral perfumes. It smells of cinnamon and spice. Cookies! Oh, cookies. I love me some cookies. I want to be like a cookie monster. Hey, Diana, do you smell that? She jots out of her thoughts and blinks. Smell what? Now you say smell what? <laughs> cookies! I think it's coming from this store over there. 
I grin and just as she did before I dive back into the street. Hey, wait. Come on! We weave through the people before stopping in front of a store filled with an assortment of baked goods. I breathe in the heavenly sweetness of sugar and sigh contentedly. Vienna closes her eyes and inhales. It smells so delicious! Yeah, wanna buy it? Or, or I can buy those coo the cookies for you, my treat. I browse the array of cookies and tiny cakes. You know, gasps. Uh, they have cinnamon parfaits. I love those. Oh, cinnamon parfaits! I would like to try that. What are those? They're cinnamon and vanilla custard layers with apricots. Oh, that sounds really delicious. Yeah. Mm. What do you think looks good? Well, I mean, at first. Uh, cupcakes. I don't like sweets. No, who says I don't like sweets? <laughs> um, cupcakes, but not not exactly a fan of cupcakes to be honest. So I would like. I'm 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 someone who likes to try something new. Okay? When it comes to food, yes, I would love to try out something new. Just not those exotic food. Yeah, like cockroaches and no, please, not 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 those kind. But I, but anything that is delicious, looks delicious, and something I've never tried before, I definitely love to try. Always love to try out. New food, so I'll try the cinnamon parfaits. Actually, that cinnamon parfait you mentioned sounds really good. They are, and they're not super sweet either, which is why I like them. Okay, I fish in my pocket for my winnings from yesterday. Oh yeah, yeah. Good thing we won the the, the cheat game yesterday, so that we I can yeah use my winnings to treat you. Today's treats are on me. Yeah, you know, looks amused. Want to use your life savings? Life savings? Nah, it's not life savings. You know, if anything, I would like I would spend all my money just for you. It sounds odd, but yeah. <laughs> I chuckle. No worry. You've been very generous towards me ever since met here. This is the least I can do to repay you. Yeah, I mean, I owe you a lot. I know it's not much, but please consider this as a please to consider this a token of my appreciation. You know, small especially, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I green then pay for cinnamon parfait for Liana and a dessert for myself. What do we get? A cupcake? Cheers! Yeah, using our food. I I, I think we bought a cupcake, so we're we cling my I cling my cupcake against <laughs> Liana's cinnamon parfait. I hold up my dessert and take a bite. As the sweetness melts on my tongue, I let out a contented sigh. This is even better than I imagined! Liana giggles and lets out an equally happy sigh as she bites into her cinnamon parfait. This is why I love markets. I, I mean, markets are cool though. Actually, I love festivals even more. Like those Jap Japan festivals. Yeah, those summer festivals. Those where you can walk across the street and then you can you know, buy food from the stores and all. Yeah, that kind of... That kind is also called market, yes. Yeah, uh... But I think in Japan it's called a festival, so yeah, I like those kind of con festivals, yes. You, know, you can buy food and stuff. And so, yeah, play with those, you know, traditional games, Japanese games, like those fishing, the f yeah, that fish, fishing using the net, yeah, and some other games, some ball games, yeah, you know. I'm, I'm not exactly sure what the terms are for those games, but yeah, you, you get what I mean, like those, you can use the uh, the net catch the koi, the fishes, and and all those kind of games. Yeah, if you have watched the anime, you you will know what I mean. I know your agreement as we return to the street. One of the guards in the marketplace notices Liana's Meshikyu emblem and pulls her over to talk. Sorry, I need to take this. Oh, okay, sure. Since this looks like official business, I better let leave them be. We can catch up later then. She smiles. See you later. Alright, so we still have two more. See what Amelia is up to and check on Zack. We'll, we'll save Zack for last because I want to catch up with all the girls before we ch check on Zack. So yeah, see what Amelia is up to. I decide to seek out Amelia. I stand by awkwardly while Amelia mutters to herself. She seems to be in the middle of something and doesn't notice my presence. Hmm. Male. Adolescent. Of a cerulean variant. What are you talking about? <laughs> she holds out her bracelet. The pango blinks at it and then looks back at her. Amelia cocks her head to the side as she observes it. Oh yeah, now the, now the pango is following Amelia. 
With Amelia's attention still on him, the pango scoots closer to the bracelet uh, and looks at her again. Uh, you, 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 uh, hold on. Him? Uh, by him, I think you, you mean you, she's observing the bracelet or observing pa the pango? Maybe, okay, maybe she's actually observing the pango while she while holding out her bracelet. I'm okay. But, but she's definitely curious about Pango now. Go on. Oh, okay. I think I know what Amelia is doing. She's like holding out a bracelet, right? Like using it as a like a bait, you know, like a fish bait to attract the Pango while, while staring at Pang at the Pango. Yeah. He cautiously sniffs at the bracelet, then sticks a tongue out to lick the air. Afterwards, he grins widely at Amelia. Huh? Yeah, there's magic in this bracelet. Interesting. Okay, I think the bracelet is referring to this bracelet right that Amina has. I think these are the bracelets that she used to cast her magic. Yeah. Normally, a cerulean pongo will leave out even the slightest trace of magical residue. Oh, but okay, because when the, when she said cerulean, cerulean is actually another word for blue. Yeah, basically. <laughs> so um, yeah. Okay, so a cerulean pongo usually jumps at the slightest trace of magical residue, but it doesn't because of me. Amelia doesn't have a chance to finish as the pango springs into her arms. Boy, boy. Don't, don't worry, Amelia. Don't need to be scared. It, it won't eat all. It won't eat you. She fumbles the catch and pulls the pango close to her chest to stabilize him. What do you think you're? Her voice trails off as she looks down at the uh, at the still smiling pango. <laughs> Amelia blinks as the caution melts away from her face. The corners of her mouth curl up into a smile, and she squeezes the pango in a cuddle. Boy, boy. Oh, you lovey dovey cuddle, he give you a hug. The pango wheezes as he squished against her chest. Oh, so cute! Join in! Should I be watching this? Well, I mean, why not? <laughs> Let's join in! <laughs> Is there room for one more? Come on, Amelia, please do it. Pretty please. I step in close and try to wrap my arms around them, but Amelia interrupts me. No. Why? Why you? Why? Why the flat out rejection? <laughs> what? Amelia, come on now. Why? Don't reject me so flatly. No. As can be witnessed, my arms are incapable of holding <laughs> you and the pongo. Well, you you don't need to hold me. I want to hold you. <laughs> you could just hold me instead. She gives me a confused look. It is not you of which I am interested. But I am interested in you. <laughs> Don't say that. I sigh and look away sadly. Oh, it never is. Oh, bad luck. <laughs> nah. She clears her throat. Regardless, I am going to the apothecary. Apothecary is. Oh yeah, that's the item shop, right? Where the sells the the um, the potions and all that. Apothecary. Can we just heal in magic? Yes, there are mages who specialize in healing magic, but they use earth magic which neither Liana nor I possess. Oh, okay, so none of you use earth magic, okay. So we don't have a healer in our party. As such, you will need to purchase healing items to treat a wound. Okay, makes sense to me. Would you like me to go with you? No, it will be faster if I go alone. Um, okay. Why are you like this? Do you not like me? <laughs> but I guess we need to give her some space. Yeah, I mean, we only just met, so before I even have a chance to react, she turns on her heels and walks away. As she goes, the pango pops his face over her shoulder and gazes longingly at me. Boy, boy. Um, why do you sound so sad? Um, uh, what? <laughs> a single tear rolls down his cheek. Huh? Pango! No! Don't go! I reach out for him as the distance between us grows. You got damn it, Pango! If you seriously miss me, you could have just come to me! <laughs> Why are you like, like living with Amelia? Wait a minute. Why is he making that face? You could literally leave at any time and just come back to me, yeah! Come back! He turns around and disappears from my view. That sticky little Pango! Right, last one. Check on Zack. Zack went straight to the inn in Illumia too. 
what's going on at all this uh in the when when he when he was in these inns. I'd like to know too. Yeah, this is a very weird line. I think there's some missing words, but yeah. I rush into the street and look for any sign of the inn. Probably he's just there, like sitting there and chilling, drinking beer, you know. Luckily I managed to spot Zack in the crowd before he disappears back into the sea of people. Showing my way down the street, I finally locate the inn just in time to see Zack. Right, we're going in. He stands in front of a large notice board filled with pinned papers. As I get closer, I can make out some of the flyers, which include a portrait of a scowling face and a large monetary number. Well, I mean he's a mercenary, so a mercenary will usually look at the bounties, right? Is Zack checking out wanted posters? Maybe he's looking for a specific bounty. I'm about to call to him when a young blonde wearing a skin tight suit of armor flounces over to him. Or oh, another one of those prostitutes. Pulling a lock of hair between her fingers. She seems to study the board. Every so often she shoots pointed glances over to Zack, hoping to catch his eyes, but his attention never wavers from the board. Finally she speaks. A bounty on your heart? Wow, what a line. What a line. <laughs> wow, this is a very clever line. Bounty on your heart. For the first time since arrival, Zack looks at her. She grins devilishly. But Zack would be like, act dense and say, Nope, what are you talking about? <laughs> because I'm looking to collect. You want to collect my heart? He refocuses on the board. <laughs> and she falls out. Oh, he just ignores her. <laughs> For her second attempt, she bumps up her ample chest and touches his arm as she speaks in a sickly sweet voice. So, are you a bounty hunter? Well, he is. Zack shucks her arm off of him. Wow. This guy, is, is Zack seriously gay? <laughs> no. <laughs> then you must be a mercenary. Yeah, he is. You're a female mercenary? You're joking, man. You're not a female mercenary. He doesn't answer. She seems to take that as a sign of encouragement and her sultry smile returns. She leans in close to him and runs her fingers up on his arm. I've got a mission that I could use some help with. Are you for hire? Again Zack brushes her hands off of him and steps away from her. Or maybe he's just embarrassed, that's why he's like acting cold towards this woman. No. <laughs> She seems a little taken back, but quickly recovers and slides closer to him. Are you sure there isn't something I could offer to change your mind? Something? Oh, what do you mean? Your body? No. <laughs> oh, Zack. Wow, Zack. Wow, seriously, Zack. I mean, but, but I gotta give him the kudos. Yeah. Yeah, give him... The, gotta plot for him, you know. Give him the kudos because, you know... Because no, usually men wouldn't be able to resist this temptation. Yeah, but Zack is able to resist this temptation. This temptation of a beautiful girl right in front of him. So, yeah, kudos to him, seriously. She sighs before plastering the same smile and lets out a small laugh. Jeez, you're kind of dense. Yeah, he's pretend. Well, I mean, actually, I think he's pretty dense. I was hoping to spend some intimate time with you. So, what do you say? But I mean the fact that his dad means nope. No thanks. But if I'm ever in need of your services, then I'll go find you at the brothel. Oh now Zack has snapped. Zack has snapped. <laughs> the woman's eyes grow white like saucers. With a sharp half, she tries to slap Zack who side steps out of the way. Oh! She misses and collapses to the ground. She lets out another half before storming off. Watch her leave. I may be interested in said services. Uh, no. As much as this will seem interesting, I do not want to engage services with a prostitute, no. So watch her leave. I hustle out of her way and she storms towards the exit. Whoa, she did not look happy. Yeah, that was weird. I go stand beside Zack. What was that about? I mean, even if we choose the other option, I think probably the girl will say, Get out of my face! Because I don't think I'm as handsome as Zack, you know. I'm not as cool as him, so he shrugs. Who cares? Who cares? Oh, you don't care. Even if a beautiful girl is in front of you, you don't care. I take a look at the wanted posters on the board. Most of these faces look like the generic weathered and scarred bandits I imagined. 
Ah, huh. is this what you had to take care of in Illumia? Zack fixes his expressionless eyes on me. When we first reached Illumia, the first thing you did was find the inn. And then when we came here, you did the exact same thing. He relaxes slightly and nods. Just staying up to date on the news. Okay. Sounds like the life of a mercenary is pretty interesting. Something like that. Okay. <laughs> uh huh. Excuse me. Are you a mercenary? Oh no! Another prostitute. How many? How many prostitutes are there? Yeah. That's one. Zack and I turn to face another scantily dressed woman. This one has fiery red hair and a mischievous green in her eye. Zack narrows his eyes. Yes. Wait, okay, what did she say again? Mercenary, uh huh. Yes. Are you sure you're not a rogue? Because you <laughs> just stolen my heart. Okay, now this line just sounds so corny. <laughs> Very bad. Zack sighs and face pumps. Yeah, I, I also face pumps. Oh, God, what the heck is this? Actually, I've never seen this post before. I think in the early access version, I've never seen this post of this before. The face pump. Yeah, face pump post. So, this is really cool <laughs> to see face pump. I have a bad feeling about this. Zack ends up shaking her off and searches for the innkeeper to buy a drink. Alright, so we have covered all three, so now I'm ready for a little bit of me time, alone time. Okay. I head into the crowds and appreciate all the marketplace has to offer. After exploring the city, I meet up with the rest of the group back at the inn. Tensions are high as we eat in silence. I think everyone is a mixture of weariness and anxiety for the next day of our journey yeah, to the hidden city of Ambermis. Even the pango is strangely silent and obedient. Once we finish eating, we head upstairs to find our rooms. Upon finding her rooms, Nienna suddenly perks up. Oh, Amelia, you and I will be sharing our room tonight. Of course, girls have to share their ro a room tonight. Why can't I share a room with you though, Diana? Maybe not yet. Maybe the times. That's not the. the, the it's not the right time yet. Amelia speaks dismissively. Naturally, that would be more popular. <laughs> of course, naturally. <laughs> she pauses. That looks like Liana with interest. Are you insinuating that you would rather share a bedroom with them? Share a bedroom with me. I mean, who cares about Zach? Zach can be alone and all he wants, but share a bedroom with me. Amelia points to Zach and me. <laughs> what do you mean of course not? What? Come on. Oh, my mistake. Of course you could not have met both of them. Really <laughs> enough beds. Is is that the issue, Amelia? Is the beds the issue? You must have met him. He who? Me? Amelia points to me. Oh, she's blushing. Yeah, you want to stay with me, right? Stay in the same room as me, right? Yena's face turns pink and she, she shakes her head. Oh, it's totally true. I can see through you. If that is false, then why is your <laughs> See, I mean, you're so smart. The point is, I'd obviously rather share a room with you. Come on, you're blushing. I mean, you're blings. If that is the case, then why even bring it up? What? Oh, as in, share room? She's gonna share room with a million? Oh, why even bring it up? <laughs> okay. Because I'm excited. It'll be nice to have some girl time. Some girl time. Oh, what girl time, bro? <laughs> Amelia studies Liana then nods. I concur. Sharing a room has proven to strengthen bonds amidst peers and foster camaraderie. <laughs> yes, that's true, Amelia, but that's a really complicated way of saying. Yes, is, is sharing a room does strengthen bonds. Yes, that's it. <laughs> but okay. But you can also strengthen bonds between males. Uh, between men. Uh, with men too, you know. Men and women together. You mean make friends? Yeah, pretty much, yes. Precisely. Yena greens and Amelia smiles back. Holly? Yeah, Pango too. No, Pango, no! Pango, no. You're not gonna join the girls, you're gonna join us, man, okay? You're not gonna steal the fun here. We all glance down at the Pango by our feet. Is it my imagination, or is he trying to ask us which room? Is, is he gonna sleep in tonight? No, you're gonna sleep with the man. Hey, okay, Pango? Amelia snatches him up in her arms. So, what? needs to spend the night with us tonight. We need him for science. What? You need him for science? What? As Amelia sleeps into their bedroom, uh, Diana nods rapidly. Yes, for science. Science. What the hell? 
then follows a minion into the room and slams the door shut. There's a moment of silence as Zack and I stare at the closed door. Is it just me or did that seem unusually suspicious to you? It is unusually suspicious, yes. Because she said for signs. I think they're gonna tickle Pango uh throughout the whole night, maybe. They're gonna so called tease Pango so called mini torture him. Is this Pango is the Pango really that special? Use me instead! Hmm. I would like to go with the second option. Come on now. You clearly, Indiana, you blushed when when Amina mentioned me. So you should use me instead. I shot through the door. You can use me for signs! <laughs> the sound Pango is making, yeah. Clearly, they're squeezing Pango. I'm pretty sure they're squeezing Pango right now. What I wouldn't give to be a Pango right about now! Still baffled by what happened. Dad and I enter our room and get ready for bed. Or we go back. We, we, we went to sleep. Oh well. <laughs> okay. Although the train was more comfortable than I expected, you cannot compare to a real bed. Yeah, because train is just sleeping on the seat. As I snuggle into the blankets, I soon drift into restful slumber. <laughs>